Senator Baldwin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to begin by recognizing the incredible leadership of the three union leaders before us today. Um, from winning historic gains at UPS and the big three to protecting airline workers during the COVID pandemic, um, you've really served your members quite ably. Um, despite these bright spots, it has been a tough year for uh, union workers in Wisconsin. Um, President O'Brien, when you came before this committee earlier this year, I asked you about the announced closures of two uh, Energizer battery plants in Wisconsin. These facilities in Fenimore and Portage were formerly Rayovac uh, facilities. Rayovac was an iconic uh, Wisconsin company. Um, these workers, uh, represented by the Teamsters, um, and, and by the way, I, I had a chance to visit with some of them just a few weeks ago uh, in Fenimore. Um, when Rayovac was acquired by Energizer in 2018, the, uh, the Federal Trade Commission uh, shocked investors when it appeared to really rubber stamp that merger with no conditions attached. Um, by the way, that same uh, merger was treated very differently by regulators uh, uh, in Europe. Um, after the approval, consumers began paying higher prices for batteries, not lower. Uh, and nearly 600 Wisconsin union members stand to lose their jobs as the company moves those jobs to Singapore and North Carolina, uh, both at facilities without uh, represented uh, union labor. Um, I've urged the Federal Trade Commission to actually retroactively review uh, that merger approval. I've asked them on two occasions so far without any luck. Um, uh, then, in July in Wisconsin, Master Lock announced that it would close its Wisconsin plant, which has operated in downtown uh, Milwaukee for nearly 100 years. Shortly after its parents' company acquired a lock business from a competitor, the company decided to move 400 jobs, 330 of which are UAW members, to Mexico and to China. We have seen this playbook in Wisconsin before, and so I am currently working on legislation that would require the Federal Trade Commission to consider the impact of mergers on workers in addition to the other considerations. Um, because the workers are the ones who bear the brunt of the quote-unquote efficiencies found after a consolidation. I'm really tired of seeing our high-wage union jobs in Wisconsin go to non-union states or abroad. These companies hire consultants who see cutting union jobs as the way to increase their margins, um, but I see it as cutting off your nose to spite your face. The truth is that unions provide the security and wages necessary for workers to develop skills, expertise, and instit institutional knowledge that are the bedrock of innovation and growth. But too many in corporate America are not interested in innovation or growth anymore. Many large companies only want to look at the very short-term quarterly capitalism, extract value, cut wages, close facilities, and increase buybacks, all to enrich themselves and their investors. So it's a big question with very little time left for the three of you. Um, but how can we change that culture of corporate America to get these companies to see their union workforces as an asset to be grown instead of a cost to be cut? Senator Baldwin is right. Very little time. Be very brief in your answers, please. You know, first, I mean, when 26 billionaires have as much wealth as half of humanity, we have a crisis in this world. Um, you know, I don't see these things, the master lock situation, uh, I, I don't see it as, as in the effort of efficiencies. I'm going to call it what it is. It's corporate greed at the expense of working class people. I mean, it's driving a race to the bottom. We have to want better for this country. I don't care what party someone is. If you truly believe that, that paying someone poverty wages is the pathway to a successful nation and a successful economy, I don't know what you're smoking. Um, so, you know, we, we have to have a just transition in this EV. We have to look at workers' wages and benefits, and we've got to stop the race to the bottom. 
Mr. Bavaria. I mean, it's just clear in that situation you described with Energizer, those jobs are gone. They're not coming back. And right now you have 600 people that have had long-term careers there who've raised families, put kids through college, and we're, we're depending upon retiring out of there. Uh, they're working under a severance agreement, so those jobs are gone. I think, um, to, to sum it up quickly, we need more oversight uh, over these mergers uh, to make sure that, first off, we keep these jobs in America, but more importantly, we've got to mitigate any type of damages or tax uh, on, these, on these workers for their, for their ability to join a union as well. I mean, they're going to go to North Carolina, which is right to work, and uh, it's proven that the medium average wage in right to work states are far less uh, than the, than the, the non-right to work states. So uh, we've got to have more oversight on these mergers and acquisitions. I agree with you completely on everything that you said, Senator Baldwin, and we do need a, a better look at um, the impact of mergers on workers. In <clears throat> fact, actually, um, there has not really been a look at the impact on workers in the JetBlue Spirit merger, which is actually going to improve jobs and increase competition in the airline industry, giving one more airline at the highest level competition with the others um, to drive uh, those jobs to better standards and also to give consumers better choice. So we need to have that. But we also need to have constraints on stock buybacks and we need to move away from this idea of the quarterly earnings because even the best CEOs that I have worked with who have wanted to run a very good company have been forced um, by uh, the, the people who own the company. They are no longer the decision makers. They are driven to send more and more money to Wall Street rather than investing in the company, investing in the workers, and investing in what is going to be good for the consumers. So we have to remember that a rising tide lifts all boats, but the working class is the tide. And that's what we have to focus on.